Today we have a brand new Roland FPE 50. We're gonna get it unboxed and take a look at every feature we possibly can and share it with you today. There's a lot to cover. I hope we get to it all, but one thing is clear, this is gonna be a lot of fun. This instrument has a ton of buzz. I've really enjoyed getting to know it. Let's get started on this right away. So we're in front of the Roland FP E50, and this was released to the world in February 2023 uh, to much fanfare. In the U U.S. market, this is selling for basically right at about the $1,000 mark. Um, in Canada, it's around the $1,400 mark. In other markets, you know, just adjust accordingly. Um, but that's going to put it within range of a really large chunk um, of the buying public, which is awesome because I hate seeing instruments that are super well done and really engaging uh, and they're just a little too high uh, in the in the price range for you know your average buyer to be able to enjoy. This really is not the case with the FPE 50. And then the other big standout for me here was the fact that it connects with the Zen Core and the Zen Cloud and the whole Roland you know cloud thing uh, that they've been building for uh, several years you can download packs of tones into this because of the Zencore uh, sound processor uh, and really expand this uh, to your liking. Uh, really get the tone and palette uh, exactly what you want for the style of music you're gonna play. And at some point, I know the intention Roland has is for you to be able to also download additional beat packs uh, for this. I don't believe that that's something that's available right now, but certainly the intent is to get there. So this is equipped with two uh, tone engines or tone uh, generators. It does have the Supernatural piano engine, but it also has the Zencore engine. So I'm getting used to that setup because it's exactly what is available in the Phantom O series. It also has uh, su some Supernatural instruments in it, um, but the core of the tones that are available there um, is produced through uh, the Zencore synthesis engine. Now it makes sense to me, or maybe I should say I'm grateful that Roland has included the Supernatural because for acoustic piano applications only, I don't find the Zencore has quite the depth to give the authenticity that I'm used to, particularly if I'm playing in some sort of professional setting or especially if I'm gonna use this as a sound source in some sort of a remote recording situation. Uh, the Supernatural is definitely a lot more, uh, I think, authentic and just has, um, especially um, up through the velocity ranges, you don't hear quite as much uh, stepping going on. You get a little bit of that uh, sometimes with some of the Zencore acoustic pianos. The other nice thing is they have included the piano designer on here uh, you can't actually access the Piano Designer with an app. The Piano Roland app or the Roland Piano app uh, does not connect with this instrument at this point. Uh, but they do have the Piano Designer on there so you can even get in there to the Supernatural engine and make those tweaks, uh, which is fantastic. So here is the sound for the Supernatural Concert Piano 001. So that was the Supernatural Concert Piano. If we go down to something that the Zencore is generating, like just Piano 1, for example.
the tone for sure. in any individual sense is still a really great sample. So once we get past the acoustic uh, piano category, and it's really easy to navigate through the sounds right here, then you get into some really juicy E piano tones. And the tone stays when you switch. There's not like that cutoff, which is awesome. Uh, some really great solo strings as well. believable, especially if you were going to layer that in with something. Super lush uh, strings as well. Massive pipe organ selection. I think the aspects where you can truly hear how much uh, breadth there is to the synthesis is when you get into the pads, uh, which, which are a little more obvious in terms of the motion and the various elements of the tone. Tons and tons of range uh, in there. I also like the fact that you've got your um, modulation wheels, uh, your, your pitch bender as well as your mod, you know, uh, usually it's assigned to a vibrato, but you could hear in that case that that was on kind of both uh, a bit of a frequency filter as well as a resonance cutoff thing. There was several things assigned to that wheel. So final points on sound. For acoustic, you're going to want to stick to the supernatural. For everything else, you're going to have a ton of fun exploring hundreds and hundreds of sounds that are already on here, a lot of them preset to work really intuitively with those mod wheels, and you've got the whole universe of the Roland Music Cloud uh, that have all of those downloadable packs. Like I said, I think it's close to 100 or maybe even over 100, which are available and compatible with the FPE50. Let's talk about the speakers now uh, because Normally in this price range, and I, I know I say this a lot, but normally in this price range, the speakers are a bit of an afterthought. Down facing speakers as well seems to be like kind of like going out of style. You see a lot of the newer instruments with either top facing speakers or back facing speakers. Um, but the form factor on this being a little bit taller, I think must have given them the ability to get larger speaker boxes inside. Because even though this is rated only at 11 watts per side, this is filling this room up like substantially, because it sounds truly fantastic.
Are they loud enough that you're going to, you know, be able to gig with these onboard speakers? No way. Uh, they've got the quarter inch out so you can get this into a PA. But certainly for personal playing at home, you are not going to have to reinforce this with any kind of an amp. Uh, it's really uh, quite impressive in terms of the fullness, given how light the instrument is and the rated wattage uh, that Roland states on its spec sheet. Now let's talk about action. Action's always important. We always like uh, to spend a little bit of time talking about that because it's your connection with the instrument. You've got the PHA4 action in terms of the mechanical uh, key bed uh, in front of you. That means you've got escapement. Uh, that's that nice little mechanical click about two thirds of the way down. I like it because it really, I think, provides that extra little bit of resistance right before uh, the point of attack when you're playing uh, quietly. I've always appreciated having that feature there when it can be there. Uh, this also has a triple sensor. It's an updated triple sensor. Uh, so the uh, accuracy of the MIDI information coming from this uh, is even better than it was a couple of years ago for people who are going to be using this to do some triggering. They also equip the PHA4 with a nice subtle uh, texture on the top of the key as well as a matte uh, finish on the black key. Now something that needs to be uh, said about the PHA4 is if we're talking about overall mechanical heaviness to the key, the PHA4, especially when it's first out of the box, does have a slightly high level of static resistance. That is how much force it takes to get the key in motion. And I've noticed this as well on my Roland uh, Phantom 08 was for about the first hour or two of playing, it felt even more stiff than what I was used to out of uh, a PHA-4. So I don't know if that's because uh, they've changed maybe some of the lubrication that's going on in the action, or they've changed how tight the hinge is um, out of the factory, uh, because I know the mechanical sound seems a little less than it used to be, and there's like just zero clicking going on with the action as well. So could all be related, but I do know that after a couple hours, it, it loosens up a bit and it feels just like PHA-4s have uh, from you know the beginning of time. Having said that, even the classic PHA-4 uh, still sits a little heavier uh, than average. For people who are only coming from a digital piano background or you know even more extreme, a keyboard background, this will take some getting used to. I think it's worth it because I think it's a very expressive keyboard, but don't be surprised. So now we come to really the centerpiece of this instrument, which is its accompaniment function. Here's how it works. Uh, you have the option to choose the style of the beat and the rhythm that you're going to uh, be playing uh, behind you. And there's quite a few to choose from, and they're all divided up by category. So here's your pop category, ballad, dance, Latin, R&B, rock, traditional, contemporary, and jazz. Uh, and then within all of those categories, there are somewhere around the 20 range per, let's say 15 to 20 each. Uh, and this is what they sound like. To go along with all of those accompaniment styles though, they've also got pre-made chord sequences, uh, one virtually for every accompaniment style that's in here. And so you can turn on and activate the chord sequence. but there's an option to actually see the chords in a bar format as you're playing along. So if you don't want to be, you know, having to control the chords and you just want to have some fun, 
it's nice to be able to call those up on a screen and actually see what the pre-made chord sequences are. Because in a lot of cases when instruments do that, you can't see what the chords are. You kind of have to let it play through a few times, learn the sequence, and then you can play along with it. This, you've got the option to see it. This is just the synth pop, you know, C minor, two bars of C minor, two bars of B flat, two bars of A flat, and then a turnaround G minor, G7. So it pretty well sequences like an entire song. Here's where it gets even cooler, is that you can quickly build your own sequences and feed them into this through a basic CSV uh, form. So if you are not gonna use the chord sequencer, then this becomes uh, really a traditional uh, auto accompaniment machine. Uh, and there are several modes that you can pick from. I've already got my sort of ones that I prefer uh, and you activate the accompaniment with the button says accompaniment on and if you press and hold it you get the menu that gives you all of the options that you would need uh, to select from. Uh, accompaniment switch obviously on off. The chord detect. Now there are two different modes of chord detect. I'm not talking about you know easy, intelligent, standard like the ones they have listed here. The modes I'm talking about is whether you have the split dual function on or mode on or whether you don't. So whether you have that sort of lower part of the instrument defined with your split point where it's kind of auto muted and that's where you're defining all of your chords or you've got that off and you're using one of the pianist uh, or pianist two modes to define what chord you're uh, playing using the entire keyboard. Uh, so I've already kind of figured out that when I'm using the split Intelligent mode is the one I like, and when I'm not, Pianist 2 is the one I'm like, and I'm gonna explain why I prefer both of those uh, situations. So with the split and the dual mode on, that means there's gonna be kind of a, a section on the lower half, and I've defined B2 as my split point, which is here, so. You can see the uh, chord, so G major seven, C major, C minor seven. So it's just gonna stay on those chords once I've defined them and I can do anything I want up here. I can also turn that interactive mode on, which is gonna sort of increase and decrease volume and intensity. So that's how that one works. But the other one that I like, the Pianist 2, what Pianist 2 does is it really kind of locks in a chord as long as you've got the pedal held down. So for jazzers who are used to sort of uh, playing solo piano where you sort of establish like kind of a harmony down low and then you'll do some soloing up top, like something like this. So that's what the Pianist 
2 mode allows you to do. The other thing that I want to make mention of is when I'm doing that and I'm playing that with uh, without the split, I actually set the split point so high, basically it's going to cover everything. Nothing's off limits as long as I'm really disciplined about using that pedal to sort of uh, take a snapshot and lock that in for as long as I'm holding the pedal down. So this is what this sounds like in uh, practice. If you don't use pianos two and you're not using the split, then it's gonna like grab three notes wherever you play three notes at the same time. So which becomes really problematic. Like let's say that you're doing some salsa and you're doing some two octave, two hand like Montuno stuff. It's gonna suddenly think that you're playing A major here. So there's ways around it. Anyway, so we've got lots of different modes to choose from. I didn't mean to go too into the weeds on that. Uh, you've got your interactive mode, which will kind of adjust your variations up and down, which is really great. So my two takeaways here that I find really unique is I find the beats they've put together really organic, but the second thing is that chord sequencer and especially the ability to edit those chord sequences off instrument and on the computer and then get them back in super easy makes this an incredibly usable gigging machine uh, for cover tunes, um, especially without you having to play them live. It's, that's a super handy thing to be able to do. When I first heard about this model, I was also asking Roland if it was gonna have tap tempo because uh, if you're playing on your own, get into kind of a groove or you want to set the instrument set uh, things up uh, without having a click you know and you want to tap, tap that tempo press and hold the tempo and then you press enter to the oh. So it makes it really easy to tap yourself in uh, for the tempo. Now, when you've got all the things set up that you want to have set up, you've got your sounds selected, you've got your uh, the type of rhythm you want to be doing, your chord sequencer, everything, you can take a snapshot of this and save it as a scene. So this is Roland's version of kind of saving your own preset or registration, but it's way more comprehensive than that and easy to do. All you got to do is you press and hold the scene button and immediately you can write everything uh, that's currently happening there into a scene and there are hundreds of scenes uh, to write into. So basically an unlimited uh, opportunity uh, to save all of those presets. Let's talk about connectivity. Um, there's a, a weird quirk with this one. Bluetooth audio but not Bluetooth MIDI. And Roland actually has something on their website sort of like indicating or suggesting that it's got Bluetooth MIDI connectivity. 
I have not seen evidence of this. Uh, I think as far as I can tell, this is really kind of strictly Bluetooth audio, or it's certainly, um, it's not, Bluetooth MIDI isn't implemented in the way that I'm used to seeing. Like, you can't pick it up on a mobile device. I know this is not compatible uh, with the uh, Roland Piano app. This does obviously have MIDI out in the form of a USB cable to your computer. No problem there. You also have the USB key, which you can record audio to. Obviously, that includes everything that's happening there. You can also use that key uh, to get some of those CSV files back on. We mentioned the mic input as well as the 3.5 mil. This does come with a matching uh, stand and three pedals. So you will see that there's uh, two pedal inputs on the back. One is for your standard uh, single pedal sustain, but the other one does support like a full triple pedal system. And as you can tell from the back, we've got our twin uh, quarter inch left and right outs. On the front, you've got your two uh, headphone jacks, one quarter inch, one 3.5 mil. And certainly last but not least, it does come with a music stand. Not fancy but it'll do the trick. In terms of comments on uh, the user interface, love that we've got a mixer right here so you can quickly adjust uh, song level, mic level, accompaniment level, and keyboard. And the display is nice and big. It's not the biggest uh, that you've seen out there. And sure, would it be great if it was touch? Yes, but I also like the fact that for everything it's giving us, particularly uh, the top quality key action, They've kept the price of this instrument really low, in my opinion. So here are my final thoughts. This is an instrument that feels like it should be priced a lot higher than it actually is. And why do I say that? Well, from a speaker standpoint, from an action standpoint, um, like I realize the speaker performance isn't quite at what you would get out of an FP60X, but it definitely feels beefier than what I get out of an FP30X. Um, we're not like a crazy level amount away from you know what the FP30X gives you, and you've got this accompaniment engine uh, with all sorts of uh, capabilities that you don't really get on any other instrument, uh, unless say you were going to look at the Yamaha DGX670. But then there's a couple of compromises that you have to uh, weigh out. 670 certainly has some nice speakers on the top. Um, the display on the 670 is slightly bigger. It's also a color display. You know, those could be deal breakers or not big deals for people. Here's where I think this one is really standing out to me, is the, the, the pianistic experience. This action blows away uh, the GHS action, and I don't want to make a big deal of that because I've talked about it in a number of other videos, but I really do think that objectively speaking, that action delivers a more authentic experience. Now this is more subjective, but I also happen to think that the piano tone, uh, and more specifically, the supernatural engine that's in here, is a little more nuanced and complex in terms of how it's, it's creating and synthesizing the tone uh, than other instruments in its price category. So I think even without the auto accompaniment, you've already got yourself a really great portable piano that delivers uh, very well for its price range. And then you add this on top, uh, and I think this is just a smashing value. I was super impressed, and I'll say it again, I had a ton of fun. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit more about this Roland FPE50. I certainly have. Uh, if it's the first time you've seen us on the channel here, also would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe and notification bell. We'd love to see you back for more. We're always digging into instruments and keyboards and pianos. Maybe you will too. Take care. My name's Stu Harrison. We'll see you again soon.